Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In this video, we're gonna talk about scaling. I guess this is a physics topic. Technically, I think a lot of this is a math topic, but a lot of my physics students have been asking about this. So I decided to make a video of it explaining what I know. So first, let's look at an example of what I'm talking about here. Let's say I have some rectangular prism 3D shape that looks like this. So this thing has some length some width w and some height h. And we know the equation for volume, or at least I hope we do. Volume for a rectangular prism is length times width times height. And let's say the volume for this thing is some volume v, where v is a variable, it can be any number. But now what I wanna know is, if I double all the dimensions of this rectangular prism, what will be the new volume in terms of v. And this is a pretty standard problem. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it's certainly standard. And here's what I would do. The original volume was length times width times height. We're gonna remember this because this is the original. Now what I said to do was double all of our dimensions. So that means my new volume, I'll call it volume new, is equal to 2L times 2W times 2H, because I doubled all of the dimensions. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna combine this two, this two, and that two, to give me eight times LWH. Now remember, LWH, that right there is the original V. So if that's V, and it's eight times the original V, then the volume increased by a factor of eight. So I repeat. I doubled the length, width, and height, and because two times two times two is eight, the new volume is eight times my original. So just to make up a number, if the original V was four, then the new volume will be eight times four, 32. So hopefully that makes sense. So now let's look at another example. Let's say I have a gingerbread man like this, okay? And he's cute, no doubt about it. And this gingerbread man is gonna have length L, it's got, you know, mass M, volume, V, whatever you want to say. But now I'm going to ask if I increase the height of this gingerbread man while keeping all the density and proportions the same, which honestly looks like way too skinny, but whatever. I'm going to say this height is now 5L. So in other words, we increase the height by a factor of 5 and all of the dimensions, density, everything stayed proportional. So if this original gingerbread man had a volume of, let's say 20 cubic inches, I wanna know what would the volume of this gingerbread man be. And all that we know is that the height increased by a factor of five. So here's what I'm gonna say. Just like before, where we doubled each of our dimensions, we're gonna do something like that. The problem is that we don't have dimensions for the width or anything else. All we know is that the height increased by a factor of five. So what are we gonna do? The first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get everything back into proportions of size. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say the volume of this gingerbread man is L cubed. And we don't know if that's true or not, because we don't know what the length is. But one thing I do know is that length is, for instance, like measured in meters and volume is measured in meters cubed. So what I'm saying is if you cube your answer for length, then you have some kind of relationship between the length and the volume. And the reason why that's important is because if this new volume is now 5L quantity cubed, we can basically see what the new volume's going to be. And again, this isn't an exact number in the sense that we don't know what the length is. But one thing we do know with scaling is that everything is proportional. And all that means is that if you're multiplying the length by five, then the effect for a volume, which is a size or a length cubed, the result's gonna be five cubed, which is 125, times L cubed, which is L cubed. And remember what we said before, the original is L cubed. We've got that L cubed right there. There's our volume, original, so the new one, the new volume is gonna be 125 times our original volume, 
which we actually know it's 20. So the answer is going to be 125 times 20 and that gives us 2,500 and I guess the units are inches cubed for this problem. And there we go. So I'll admit that one was harder. Maybe you don't fully understand what happened, but let's just look again what we did. If you increase the length by a factor of five, then you gotta say 5L cubed, like both things cubed. So now let's look at a harder one. Let's go back to the rectangular prism example, our good friend. And again, this thing has a volume of let's say V naught or V original, whatever you wanna call it. And let's also say that this rectangular prism has a surface area to volume ratio of R naught. So in other words, if you were to add up the surface area, which we don't need to know the equation for that, but if you take the surface area, you divide by the volume, we get this quantity R naught. And now the question is, let's say I take this volume and my new volume is going to be 64 times the original value V naught. I want to know what will my new ratio be, in other words, the surface area over volume, for this rectangular prism, who we multiply the volume by a factor of 64. So here's what I'm going to do for this one. The secret is basically breaking down these variables into their most basic form. And what I mean by that is a volume is equal to a length cubed. And again, it, it's not the formula because we know volume is length times width times height. But what I'm saying is that if you change the dimensions for length and you cube that change, you're going to get the new change in volume. And even if that doesn't make sense fully, at least copy what I'm saying because we're gonna follow a pattern for all these. So basically what I would write is the volume 64 V naught equals something times L cubed. And when I say something, I mean make it a variable, we'll call it X and we're solving for X. That's gonna be the factor here. So if we wanna solve for X, then all I gotta do is take the cube root of both sides, and maybe you don't know what the cube root of 64 is, but I do, it's four. And then the cube root of V naught, on the right side we have X times L. Now maybe you're more confused than before, but hopefully you realize that these two quantities are the exact same thing. Let me prove it. We said earlier that volume equals length cubed. And if you were to take the cube root of this equation, then you would get cube root of V equals L. And that's exactly what we have right now. What I'm trying to tell you is that the L and the volume cancel out and it looks like four equals X. In other words, if you increase the volume by 64, then you increase the length by a factor of four. And now we got to look at the surface area divided by the volume quantity, which surface area is basically the same thing as length squared. And that's because area has units of meters squared, inches squared, whatever. And then like we said before, volume has units of length cubed. So if I have surface area over volume, essentially it's the same thing as L squared over L cubed. And we can reduce this because L squared cancels with L cubed, leaving us with one over L, just like that. And remember, what was our change in our length? We said it was a change of four. So basically what I'm saying is my new ratio is gonna be one over four L. And again, if this was the original ratio surface area to volume, in other words, this is my R naught, then I can say this piece right here is R naught, and I still have the four in the denominator, which means my final answer is one fourth of R naught, and there's our answer. Again, maybe this is still confusing to you, and I get it, believe me, I know this is hard, but let's do one more example, and maybe that will clear things up for us. So for this next one, I'm gonna tell you one thing we learn later in the year is that the force between objects, such as planetary objects, is proportional, and that's what this symbol means, proportional. That's actually the symbol I should have been using this entire time. I've been using equal sign, but I should have been using the proportional sign. Frankly, it doesn't matter, as long as you know what you're doing. But F is proportional to one over the distance squared. And so my question's gonna be, 
What must be my new distance d in order to double the force? And again, this is the force between two very large objects such as planets, but even that doesn't matter to answer this question. Our question is, we need to get 2f here, and what do we need to put next to this d, in other words, solving for x, such that we get that two right here on the left. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square that denominator. It's gonna be one over x squared times d squared. And again, that's proportional to two f. Since f is proportional to the one over d squared, we are allowed to say that the d squared here cancels with the f there. And again, that's because they're proportional. Now that the weird variables are out of the way, all that's left is two equals one over x squared. You may notice I changed it back to equal sign. That's because it doesn't matter. You can do that. Or at least I'm saying you can do it right now. I give you permission. And if we want to solve for x, then I am going to invert both sides. And that just means raising both sides to the negative first power. What that also means is flipping it. So instead of two, it's going to be one half. And instead of one over x squared, it's going to be x squared over one, which is just x squared. And then finally, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. So it looks like x equals the square root of one over two, which if you want to rationalize this, you can multiply your answer by root two over root two. That'll get you a final answer of root two over two. And that's the value for x. So in other words, the new distance is root two over two times whatever the original distance was. And there is our answer. So again, I know this is hard. I think you just gotta keep doing example problems. If you want, you can rewatch this video and try the problems again on your own. And of course, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.